point A to point B pedaling in the wheelchairs. And that's what was taking her so long to get to the front door. She was coming from the back of the house to the front in a little wheelchair, just pedaling. So now while we were walking and she was talking, we passed by this little round table in her foyer area. And she had a little book on it. She said, baby, wait. I want you to sign my autograph book. And I said, oh, my goodness, an autograph book. Y'all remember autograph books from high school? Oh, my God. She had an autograph book just like that sitting on her four-year table. You know, back in high school, on the end of the year, our, our friends would sign, write us memorable things on a page, and they fold that page over, and then somebody else write on the next page, and they fold that page over, and so forth and so on. Then about 20 years later, we crawl up in our attic and pull down that old autograph book and open it up, dust it off, and start reading that stuff. Say, ooh, he sure did love me. Ooh. <laughs> Because the book is full of so many memories. Well, she had that kind of autograph book sitting right on that table. I said, oh, I'd love to sign your book, but may I do my work first? And she said, oh, yeah, baby. Come on. Come right on. So we began to walk deeper into the oven. Y'all know older people have hot houses. <laughs> and I always refer to it as walking deeper into the oven. So, after we got back to where she likes to sit, prop her feet up, get comfortable and relax, I went into nurse mode. And I'll tell y'all like I tell my students. The very first thing I did was take out vital signs, because vital signs are vitally important. That's why the word vital is in front of the word signs. It tells us the acuity of the situation. It tells us how fast we need to move, how slow we can stroll. Vital. The next thing I did was her head to toe assessment, and I was thorough. Y'all say thorough. Ooh, my students hate that word. Oh, they hate it. You know why? Because when I ask them a question, they can't give me some quick little flippant answer. Because that just tells me they just know. You see, I like it when people understand. Every objective has the word understand in it. Because a lot of folk know a lot of stuff. But that's all they do is know it. When you understand something, you can actually break it down so somebody else can understand it. You see what I'm saying? People ask you a question you got the answer for, but you can't elaborate. We can't break it down so a patient understands what's going on with them. Heck, we can't explain stuff to our coworkers. Half them don't know what's up and down. Working department to department, you know how we feel about each other. Well, they ain't doing nothing over there, no way. <laughs> we'll say that in a minute. Well, I don't understand their value. I don't understand how awesome they are, what they bring into the table. Because understanding, I know it's lab, but what they're doing? What are they doing? I still don't have my results yet. <laughs> we don't understand one another, and that's vital. You know, how often is it that, that somebody you love goes to, the, goes to the doctor's office? Let's say mama doesn't feel too good the other day. She said, ooh, baby, I don't feel so good. I said, well, you going to see the doctor tomorrow? Yeah, I made an appointment. I'm going to go see the doctor tomorrow. Okay, well, let me know how everything comes out. Okay, I will. So the next day comes, mama goes off to the doctor's office, and you go off to work. So when you go off to work, you're waiting all day long for the phone to ring. So you say, I wonder how mama's visit went. I wonder what went on at the doctor's office. Mama ain't called me yet. You even get to the point of getting to the house at late in the evening. You still haven't heard from mama yet. Hmm, mama ain't called me. Wonder what in the world's going on. So well, let me call her. So you call, pick up the phone, call. Hey, mama. Hey, baby. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. How you doing? I'm doing good. Did you go to the doctor today? Yeah. Well, what'd he say? I don't know. That's exactly what happened. What would it be like if Big Mama actually came home and started saying, well, let me tell you what that doctor said to David. You'd be like, it's amazing. If we understand it well enough, and I'm going to show you in more detail what I mean by understanding, to have somebody who came to us broken actually get it well enough to be able to explain to their family what's going on so that they understand it and you see peace of mind come over their face. Better yet, you see the light of hope come on in their eyes. That's the kind of thing that's magic to us that we have the ability to make happen. So, I was thorough, because I like to be thorough. And we did a head-to-toe assessment. 
I want y'all to know I checked her out like a fine tune machine. I checked her radiator, fan belt, spark plug tires. I checked her out good, y'all. And then after that, I did her dressing change. Because remember, that's why I was sent in the first place, right? I want y'all to know that I'm so anal retentive that I use pink and shears around the corners. <laughs> Every dressing I do is ready for Cinefold, next medical journal. <laughs> And then I wrote Moby Dick. And I believe I see enough sage in this room to understand exactly what I mean by saying I wrote Moby Dick. Back in the day, nurses wrote narrative nurses' notes that were so detailed. Not only would our narrative nurses' notes save our animal, but they would save every animal on the floor. We wrote narrative nurses' notes so detailed they would even save the bricks the building was made out of. Today I have to teach my baby nurses to chart by extension. <laughs> Y'all know charting by extension will scare an old nurse to death. Too much space. Too many things could happen. Because <laughs> we have to be accountable for everything, remember? So I wrote Moby Dick like we used to. We fill this page up, flip that one, oh, fill this page up, flip that one, oh, fill this page up. We write Moby Dick about eight times in one day, but we knew what happened. So then after I did that, the visit was over. It was time to go. So we began to walk back out. That's the front door. Here I am, and here she comes pedaling. And y'all know what? She's still talking. <laughs> Baby, how you make your peach cobbler? I said, ooh, I think the most important thing is the dough. I like to knead that dough. I just knead it today. I said, ooh, I know what you mean. Ain't nothing like a flaky crust. <laughs> right about that time, we got back to that little table in the foyer. And she said, wait, baby. You forgot to sign my autograph book. And I said, oh, my goodness. I put my stuff down, walked over to the table, picked up the book, gave myself a minute to think of something good and memorable to write. Opened the page, and I began to write. In the process of writing, I got to thinking about that sweet little lady. And y'all know, when our patients are talking, the whole left side of us numb. You know what they're really saying to us? is I'm not just a medical record number. I'm not just this old diagnosis. I'm so much more than this illness I have. What they're trying to tell us is this is who I am, and, and these are some of the places I've been, and these are the things that I've done. They're trying to make themselves human to us. That's all they're trying to do. So that's all of that talking of the whole left side of you know. Sometimes in all that talking, when we listen real good, we get good information that we can use so that we know how to handle them individually. Because every person is an individual. A diagnosis is a diagnosis, but who is this person? And what are they about? And where have they come from? And where are they going? All that feeds us information that we use for documentation and that we use to be able to put our fingerprints on these people. So that's all that talking is about. And you know, I, I find that every now and then we work with people who talk the whole left side of us. No. <laughs> I like to say that sometimes life happens to us too. Just because we're in healthcare, just because we're running the show doesn't mean that life doesn't happen to us at the same time. And just last night, something happened where life drove up into my driveway. And I'm supposed to be at work this morning to take care of business. I usually come 110% because that's how I bring it, because I'm so passionate about what I do. But because life drove up in my driveway last night, all I got is 50% today. But because I'm committed, I did come to work anyway to give just the 50% that I have. So here I am coming in. And you know what? I'm wringing my hands because life is dealing with me. And you know who I'm looking for? I'm looking for that lady right there. 
in the mauve striped sweater because she'd been working with me for years. And the expression on her face right now is the same expression that I've seen out of her for years. It's not just on her face, it's in her eyes mm. and it's in her heart. And she cares about me like you would not believe. She cares about me like a sister. I said that your professional people that you're with every day is your family. You believe that? Sometimes this family know more than that family knows. Be careful because the Christmas party's coming. <laughs> but I'm looking for her and I'm wringing my hands and I'm hoping she's at work today because don't nobody listen to me like she listens to me. She hears my heart and I've come to her. Every now and then Rufus acted crazy. And I couldn't wait to get to work today. Oh, girl, do you know what that clown did last night? Oh, my God, he broke my heart. Oh, he just go off this bad. Sometimes he just hurt me so bad. I, uh, 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 you know, and I'm just giving it all to her. And she's just receiving it. She's just taking it. Because that's what we do for one another. But now in the process of going 90 to nothing like this and never, never, never stopping, you know what your co-worker's saying? We got to go to work. <laughs> You still letting it go? Like, we got to go to work. <laughs> and you know what people who want to talk the whole left side of you know? You know what they do? They get between you and the universal I got to go signal. That's the front door. Here I am. And somehow, here she is. Remember a little bit ago, she was on that side. When I got the autograph book, it switched. Because she wasn't through talking yet. Don't people do that to you? The universal I got to go signal is your ability to put your hand on the doorknob because you got work to take care of. And here you are, stuck. And she's still talking. What do you think in the back of your mind when somebody's talking the whole left side of you numb? You think in the back of your mind, if they just take a breath, I'd jump in there. <laughs> At that moment, she took a breath. And I said, my dear, you know I got two more patients to see. And you know they're waiting for me. I'm going to come back tomorrow, and we get to talk again, but I, gosh, I need to get those patients taken care of. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. Let me let you get on out of here. <laughs> I know I don't want you to get a ticket speeding in the streets. You go ahead and see those other people, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow, okay? All right. Well, you have a good night, okay? Okay, baby. Bye-bye. Out the front door, down the sidewalk, back into my car. I got to thinking about that sweet little lady. You see, she gave me so much food for thought because she talked. You see, I know what the rest of her evening is going to be like because, you see, when I walked out the door, I heard the locks knocking. This was the evening visit. I know she's about to pedal herself back to her bedroom. I know she's going to parallel park next to the bed. She's going to put herself in bed, Bohani first, and then her legs. Then she'll reach down to the bottom and pull up the covers nice and snug. And then she'll reach over to the nightstand where she'll pick up a stack of autograph books but she'll begin to read page <laughs> after page oh. after page mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and she'll continue to read until she reads herself to sleep because you see there's no family coming anymore there's no neighbor that's going to drop by there's nobody from the church coming over. There's no social organization going to swing through. This is her life for the rest of her life. And I got to thinking to myself, I said, you know, I went all up in there and I did everything that I've been trained and educated to do. My skills were impeccable because I'm that anal about it. I, I, I was compassionate and I was caring and I was gentle and and I, I did everything I know to do as a professional. I went in there with my vital signs. <laughs> Vitally important. And then uh, I did my 
thorough head to toe assessment. And then remember my dressing change, centerfold. And then I wrote Moby Dick. I did everything the way I was supposed to. But then I got to thinking. I said, it seemed like it wasn't all about that today. I said, today the treatment was me. How many times have you been the actual medication that somebody needed? How many times have you been the therapy that they needed? How many times have you been the treatment that somebody really needed? So many times people come to us broken, and that's the way they are in front of us. And here we have what has been ordered and prescribed in the palm of our hands, ready to take care of our business and do our job. And here we are ready. And if we look just a little deeper in their eyes, it'll reveal their heart. Because what they're really saying is, baby, I know you got what's been ordered for me in the palm of your hands. Oh, but what I need more than anything today is not what's in the palm of your hands. It's what's behind your hands and in your heart. What they're saying to us is, oh, what I wouldn't give for a hug today. Oh, what it would be like if somebody would just touch me. All those little things that you do, and you don't even recognize how healing you are. Because the part on me that may be most broken today may not be my medical. It may be my emotional. And you know, they work so well together. Every now and then, you do it to each other, too. You're walking through the building. There. Oh, my God. Let me, let me see that earring. Oh, look. Turn your head to the side. Turn your head to the side. Oh, look at that. Oh, those are sharp. And your cut just really does accentuate them. I love that. Oh, my God. God, you are so hot. I wish I could touch you. I better go, I better go, you need to burn me. Oh, you are just so awesome. I'll see you later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. And there you go. That's somebody that you saw in passing. You work with them all the time. But we do that, and we don't even realize, how did I know where her heart was today? Because life is dealing with her. But she's so used to taking care of folk that she didn't even say life is tearing me up inside today. How did I know before I took two fistful of rose petals and just threw them at my coworker and lifted her up just a little bit higher? You do that kind of stuff all the time. I remember when I was a volunteer, 